Hey guys, what's up? Today I'll be doing a top 10 level 5 RPGs. RPGs that were developed and published, some of them by this company. Now, this list will not include only in Japan games, and unfortunately, it won't be including Yokai Watch games because I'm honestly not a fan. Alright, let's begin! Number 10, Nino Kuni. To a lot of you, I know this will be on the first spot of the list. Not to me, as I mentioned before, I'm just not keen into the monster collecting idea. I'm into demon training like in Shin Megami Tensei, but cute little creatures, nah. However, I still found Nino Kuni to be quite pleasant on certain areas. The visuals, for example, are simply gorgeous. But it's Studio Ghibli, so it shouldn't be a surprise. The charming story about a kid trying to find and save his mother is beautiful. But it's also pretty much a plot for children, although a very good one, to get them into the genre. I thought the battle system was cool, but just not enough to keep me interested. It's real time, as you can see, but with no direct control of the monsters. You just give them commands to attack as you move around too. Overall, I can see why this game might be an enchanted masterpiece to some people, but it just isn't my type of game, that's all. Number 9. Fantasy Life Fantasy Life is an action RPG where you choose from a variety of jobs for your character. It's pretty much, hence the name, a fantasy life simulator. The world's peace is interrupted by many mysteries involving monsters going nuts. So it's your goal to solve everything because you're the chosen one. Not a game you'll play for the story, that's for sure. It was developed with the intention of creating the simulation around its simple gameplay features. It's basically driven by quests where your character can switch jobs if you want to. All of them will go from a variety of additions like blacksmith, cooking or alchemy for example. Other characters can join your little gathering missions to help you fight. The world is vast and there will be many areas to explore, some of them full of secrets. Not exactly an open world though, but kinda like one. Besides its several micro game features, everything will always revolve around your current job. This is a solid game. It can be quite repetitive at times, but also quite addictive. Number 8. Dark Cloud Dark Cloud is the very first video game level 5 ever created. It's an action RPG where you'll control 5 main characters. They join together for different reasons, but the main goal will always be to restore the towns an evil genie destroyed. In order to do that, you'll dungeon crawl through dangerous areas to find items called Atla that serve the purpose of rebuilding towns. Combat in this game often feels more like duels, especially if you're only fighting one monster at a time. It's kinda technical where you'll need to maneuver carefully to attack your enemy sometimes. Switching to another character will work wonders as they can be strong against a certain type. Inside these dungeons, your characters will get thirsty and they'll need to step on pools or drink water. Else your health meter will rapidly decrease as well and you'll die. I really like the concept and ideas of this RPG. It reminds me a lot of Soul Blazer on the Super Nintendo, but its difficulty spikes can easily put off anyone out there, so I understand it's not a game for everyone. Number 7, Dragon Quest 9. For a few games, Square Enix hired level 5 to develop their main Dragon Quest games. 9 felt different though, but because it was more of a quest-driven RPG, the type where you create and customize your main character, choosing between a guy or a girl. The customization part is a feature that was never seen before in the main series, but of course the game does have its story and plot important characters. Your protagonist is an angel type of creature called a Celestrian. Upon falling from the observatory, your quest will be to find a way back to it. But to do that, they'll have to gain benevolence by helping people in trouble. 
Exploration and battle mechanics are still traditional Dragon Quest. Once you choose your actions, these animations will play out with your characters attacking their enemies. It's also the first game to finally get rid of random encounters, so now you can see the enemies on the map. Dragon Quest IX is a good game, but half of the time doesn't really feel like a true main game. Still, it's above average and definitely worth checking out. Number 6. Dark Cloud 2 A sequel that, in my opinion, surpassed the original. It has more charm, more personality, more gameplay mechanics, but only two main characters. That's okay though, it never really bothered me. It's a steampunk world where your protagonists will travel between past, present and future to stop an evil emperor. It's still a dungeon crawler or area crawler for some parts, and the battle system is still kinda technical, although it's more relaxed and less clunky than its predecessor. In other words, it has better combat. It also features several unique boss fights with certain requirements to beat them. Rebuilding the town here is kinda similar to the first game, but now you can recruit several characters to help you with that. There's not really a lot of management here, but the administration and planning can still be somewhat tricky. A variety of minigames are also included, like taking photographs, for example. So in conclusion, it took the ideas of the first game and evolved correctly, offering a more immersive and balanced experience to make it much better in every sense. Number 5. Nino Kuni 2 the sequel to the original was way more to my liking, especially because of its Suikoden influence. A coup de grace causes future young King Evan to flee his castle. However, a human from a real world that's been transported to this fantasy world will join forces with him and therefore, their goal will be to build a new kingdom to eventually take back Evan's castle. So as you can see, it's all about building an army like in Suikoden, and just like that series, the game has multiple battle systems. One of them is regular action RPG, where you and your allies will fight on real time upon approaching an enemy. You can control any of them if you want to, and obviously they fight differently. The other battle system has the player strategizing for RTS battles. These skirmishes are based on creating small platoons with different strengths and weaknesses, so a rock-paper-scissors rule can play out in your conquest. Once all of your tactics or buffs are selected, you will go around these areas, but you can't directly control your troops, they'll fight by themselves based on your previously decided commands. Honestly, I think this is a great game, even though it can be kinda obtuse by forcing the player to increase the castle's level. Number 4. White Knight Chronicles 1 and 2 this is one game separated in two volumes, as one is a direct sequel to the other. Level 5 wanted to follow the Fantasy Star Online formula, creating both an MMORPG and a regular RPG at the same time. They succeeded for a time as the online features in this game were great at first, but soon they died out and servers were shut down. Story mode left the players in the shoes of a customizable character. Nonetheless, the real protagonist, Leonard, took the reins of the story all the time. Along with you and his friend Yuli, he'll go from a mere wine employee to a full-fledged knight in order to save the kidnapped princess, especially since he's the chosen one to use the Great White Knight. Instead of hacking slashing during combat, you'll select the abilities you want your character to perform. Combos, magic and skills will be bound to this system as well, and the knight battles will have to abide by the same rules. You're here for the story mode, in fact, playing only the first game makes no sense, as it's very short and the story doesn't really end, so it's better to treat them as if they were just one game released on two discs. After all, they look and play almost exactly the same. Number 3. Rogue Galaxy By now you should have noticed level 5 often aims for sandbox adventures, they like open-world features, Rogue Galaxy was one of the very first RPGs they created like this. Influenced by Star Wars and Star Trek, a story goes on about Jaster Rogue, who wants to be a sky pirate. 
Upon a few encounters and circumstances, his wish finally comes true and joins an intergalactic pirate crew. Of course, Jaster and friends will eventually be fighting against all sorts of evil. But the point is that the game lets you freely explore several different planets in the universe. You will have to unlock them as you advance through the story though. So this is another action RPG, very hack and slash like, as it is fast paced. But also one where you can control any character you want. Now, it's a very challenging game, mostly because your characters lose health quite often and die a lot. And since your inventory is limited, it only makes the game unnecessarily harder. Encounter rate is also pretty high as well. However, it's worth it because it's so good. Controls are responsive, visuals are stunning, story is great, cast is very unique and interesting. Honestly, despite its unnerving problems, this is still one of the best RPGs developed by level 5. Number 2, Dragon Quest VIII. This one is the first main title Square Enix hired level 5 to develop, 9 was the last. It was a PS2 exclusive for a long time until it was ported to the 3DS. That version includes several new features, rebalanced difficulty and two new main characters, so it's probably the best one to go, but it's portable only and honestly you can't go wrong with the original PS2 release. I often praise the music and the visuals here, I'm a huge fan of cell shaded graphics and this one just looks as beautiful and as amazing as Rogue Galaxy or the Dark Cloud games. I also got a lot of open world vibes when I played it, since the exploration can be quite vast. It's a huge grind fest like most Dragon Quest games, so be prepared to do a lot of fighting, even if it's just for money. But I think the natural charm of the game is worth going through its challenging ruse. Original versions may have a short cast of characters, but each with strong development and interesting background. This is one of the best Dragon Quest games ever made, and I'm so glad level 5 was in charge of it. Number 1. Jean Dark Here's the criminally underrated Jean d'Arc. Most people don't know it was developed by Level 5. Perhaps because it's one of the very few, if not the only grid-based tactical RPG they've done. It's a mix between the historical events of Joan of Arc in France and of course anime, fantasy and magic. Pretty much anime Joan of Arc, but masterfully written, dark, deep and just as tragic as the original story. The battle system starts off very simple with the usual characteristics of most strategy RPGs, but some features like Jean transforming into a powerful being give the game that strong and special touch it needed. It also has its own unique triangle system based on three elements called Sol, Luna and Stella. Like most level 5 RPGs, the more you advance, the more challenging it becomes, so at some parts you'll need to grind regularly. I suggest you focus often on Jean as most of the gameplay revolves around her. This is a fantastic game, still somewhat overlooked nowadays. I hope you find a way to play this, as it is truly an excellent RPG with amazing combat and strong character development. Did you know Level 5 also owns a very obscure series of soccer RPGs called Inazuma 11. I've never played a single one of them because the idea of mixing sports with RPG doesn't sit very well in my head, but maybe I'll give him a chance one day. That's why maybe those of you who know about that series didn't see a single game of that series in this video, because honestly I just don't know man, but that's just me. So that's my list, hope you enjoyed this video, thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!